Hi everybody, this is Don Pavlica from Howell. It's Friday morning, February the 6th, 2015. And I just want to go over a couple of things before we get on to the last portion of the video tutorial of painting Eric Clapton. I'm on, right now, three pretty nice sites. I'm on Fine Art America, and you can just Google my name if you were to get in there and get all sorts of neat things. Let's let's click this one on here that we just painted of Eric, and <clears throat> you can certainly purchase from Fine Art America, but you can also um, get some pretty neat things as well, such as phone covers. For the Galaxy, iPhone cases, pillows, all sorts of neat things that you may like to have. And you can actually move these things around a little bit if you were to get somebody a, a gift um, of Eric Clapton. Anyway, there is the, uh, there's the pillow and so on and so forth. So, um, let's see if we can get out of the pillow here. And as I said, you can purchase this in a, uh, a frame, in a canvas print, in a metal print, as a greeting card, and phone cases and throw pillows on Fine Art America. Okay, another site that I'm on, I have a lot of fun with this one. Um, this is uh, my Deviant Art site. And <clears throat> in here, the offerings are more. And there's a thousand and one things you can get from this site as well. You can even get into uh, mugs. You can purchase uh, mouse pads of the of the image, and as well as uh, prints, gallery wraps and stretch canvas and photo prints and so on and so forth. So I'm at DeviantArt and uh, you can Google my name or just go to flashartdon.deviantart.com. Okay. Let me see if we can get beyond this and back to my site <clears throat> where I, I want to show you two things. One is I have the image up that we just painted and you can purchase if you like um, a myriad of standard sizes uh, from 8x10s, 8x10s in a black mat, 8x10s in a nice wooden frame or as a stretch canvas. And you come down here, you can even get varnished paper that I'm offering. But a 16x20 um, gallery wrap, if purchased from me, is only a $139. And also, <clears throat> what you have, and I just want to show this to you, if you're really thankful for the work that I did in putting these videos together, each one, each set, I should say, uh, the set of Katrina's Katarina's Tiger, the set of Eric Clapton, which was really in depth, that took me over a week um, to get done. So, if it was any benefit to you and you want to donate five dollars um, I certainly would appreciate it it's not required 
and that's not the intent of this message. But if you have it in your heart to donate a few dollars, you just, again, I showed you this the other day, you just select this item, and then you can purchase three, if you like. Update the cart and proceed to checkout. Okay? Or five bucks. Anyway, um, again, I'm doing this due to the fact that I had some unexpected expenses this summer, or this year, I should say, and we're going to get through it okay, but in the meantime, I'm going to try and put a little extra change in my pocket because I won't be able to attend but maybe one or two art shows. They're costly. And for those of you who have participated in them, know how costly they are. So we'll let you go and we'll come back in a heart beat. Okay? Okay, welcome back. You can see I have done actually quite a bit. I went back to the liquid ink brush and did some things and also painted with some watercolor effects and so on and so forth. Now, and you can certainly experiment on your own with uh, the different brushes. And the good thing is you can just hit Command Z if you don't like the effect and keep on going back until you get to a point in your painting where it wasn't looking too bad. And if you've added uh, a couple of things and you want to back off on those, you just hit Command Z, the undo. That's one great thing about this program. I don't want to say it's my most used anymore. At one time it was, but um, I, I use it when I test a brush in a in an area, and if I, I feel it doesn't belong there, I'll just hit Command Z and remove it from the painting. Anyway, what I want to do is show you how I um, do my signatures, and I always do them and something that's going to show up, if it's going to end up in here, or if it's going to end up, whoops, there, here we go, Command C, or if it's going to end up in, in, in this area. And right now, I don't want to take any effect away from the guitar or the work that I've done here with some special brushes, but what I'll end up doing is putting it down here. Now, the good thing is this. I can, I will zoom in. You can see I used some brushes that allowed me to show the canvas in the background that I've used. And now it's coming forward a little bit more. And that's fine. I, I kind of like that effect. But what I'm going to do is, is just put my signature And if you've followed me at all through time, um, you will see that I date the year of my paintings. I have done, oh gosh, probably close to maybe 500. I, I'd have to go back and look. But anyway, I'm going to put it right here. Just move it. I just grabbed this tool right here. Where is it now? Here we go. And brought it over here, this little pointer. And this is the guy right here, the layer adjust. And I can put it anywhere, but I'm going to stick it right here. And that will be that. And then I go up and I'll do a uh, save as. 
Um, number 31 is I always use this uh, calligraphy pen anyway, but uh, this is just for reference. If you enjoy doing that, to, to go back and look and, and see, God, what's that, what brush did I use here? And that's the important thing, um, especially in the beginning when you're starting to use Corel Painter, to go ahead and do. Now I'm going to drop, I'm going to save it one more time. And I'm going to save it as the same number that I just did. But I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file. And I'll show you why here in a minute. And bingo. And Corral gives you a warning that this image that I, I've just painted, I may not be able to bring it back and do more work in it with the original image. And but that's okay, as you recall, I just saved it previously as a RIF file, so this number and this number are the same the number of the RIF file and the number of the Photoshop save as. So, anyway, there it is. And what I'm going to do. Here in a second, I want to show you a couple of neat things here. I hit Command W, got out of there, and now I'm going to get into Photoshop and bring in that painting, and it will be PSD. See, this number and this number are the same. I've learned because I've made some mistakes and couldn't get back into it. But uh, in any event, saved it as a Photoshop file. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is duplicate this. And here's the duplicate. And I'm going to go into a couple of different things. Maybe you just uh, the topaz. And, whoops, sorry. Yeah, I still make some mistakes now and then. I've got to flatten the image, and that's fine. Now, I've got a duplicate of my original painting, and now what I'm going to do is uh, add some pop to it. And I can do that several different ways. This is one that I'm, I'm still learning, and... I want my collection here and uh, the ones that I've say crisp too. All right, see how that filter really adds to it? And with this software that I've got from Topaz, I've got a before and I've got an after. And if I don't like that, I can go into a See how that looks? That looks pretty good. It just gave it a little pop, a little more brightness, and I'm going to come down here and select OK, and it's going to automatically bring me back into Photoshop with the change that I made. There's the difference. There's the painting that I did. And once I gave it some more pop, and you could probably do this a variety of different ways. But this is the way that I do it. And um, I don't recall how much that uh, filtering system costs, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit. It isn't overbearing. And if you would like the link to that, um, just ask me and I will provide the link for you or you can just Google uh, Topaz. So in any event, I like this. So I'm gonna put this away and 
right in here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save as, continuing here with the actions that I'm taking. And I'm going to save this as a TIFF file. I'm going to double check the image size. All right, this is right where I want to be. And I've explained this uh, in some previous sessions that it's important for me that I use a typically an 11 by 14 black mat. And I, I have the uh, company make a 8 by 10 hole in it. And I have this oversized by a point two in both areas, which gives me an awful lot of freedom when I'm placing the uh, canvas. I print out on, on canvas and adhere that <coughs> to the back side of the mat with some tape and then I add a foam board and I can frame it if I like or whatever. So anyway, that's acceptable. Now I'm going to also save this as I'm going to add a new folder, printing. And I'm going to add right here 8.2 by 10.2. There we go. So now I'm ready to, to go ahead and print if I want to. The other reason that you want something close to an 8 by 10, it turns very nicely into a 16 by 20 for my gallery ramps that I, I, uh, I, I do. And I also work with a company here in uh, Michigan to uh, Wheaton's Frame Shop in not too far from uh, Lansing. So it's not too far from where I live and I try to keep a lot of this work that I have done after the painting locally, as much as I possibly can. So in any event, that will give you an idea of how Don paints. And one more thing I'd, I'd like to do. Okay, um, now it's time to finally wrap up. And again, thank you for your time, for your commitments. Any comments that you've made, I appreciate it. And just as a reminder, this is the image that we started with. This is how we ended up. And it's not too bad. As I begin to look through this thing, time and time again. The more that I look at it, the happier I am with it. That isn't always the case, but it was on this one. Here you can see that uh, the brush I used um, displayed the canvas underneath. So it shows a little bit of the canvas. A lot of this in here, of course, was custom brushes. This is all done with soft charcoal. And here, this was done with an oil brush. And if there is any other questions, concerns, things I'd like to do for you, let me know. Again, um, here is the final image. And I just want to throw this up there in case you would either like to have a commission done by me or have a workshop or one-on-one -on -one training. I can bring my laptop along and we can sit in a coffee shop or you can come to my studio, whatever it might be, and we'll go through a series of uh, techniques and training in Corral Painter. So in any event, finally, this is, is over. And I really do thank you again, and you make it a great day.